Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest version of uh, Tales, Tales from Tales, Outer Tales, Space, Tales, Space, Tales, Space, where I take an HFY story from somewhere around the internet and read it aloud for your enjoyment. All the relevant links are down below. Like, subscribe, and all that YouTube comf to help this video and channel grow. Anyways, as always, I hope that you enjoy. I would just like to thank the following tier 5 patrons and channel members for supporting the channel. Fallen Angel, Buzz Kennington, Data Magnet, and Bob the Dragon. Thank you again, and now on to the story. Experimental Tactics, written by C-SPAN. Sir, FDL projection detected. The human reinforcements will enter real space in three hours. I paused briefly in acknowledgement before asking the all-important question. Any information on what exactly they're bringing to the engagement? Something called a tug carrier, sir. I'm afraid I've never heard of it before. Neither had I, but it wasn't exactly unusual. Our human allies had a tendency to deploy new tech on lower stakes battlefields as a way of field testing. I personally thought that the practice was more than a little reckless, but there are indeed teams who are some of the best in the galaxy, and you couldn't really argue with the results. And this was definitely a low-stakes battlefield. Intel had somehow gotten their cilia on the enemy plan to do a smash and grab on one of our lightly defended mining outposts, and Command decided that it was worth sending a few ships out to stop them which resulted in me sitting in the hinterlands of the galaxy, with three light attack craft and an experimental human ship on the way. Hopefully, this one wouldn't explode. Again. It wasn't long before the human ship emerged from subspace with all the subtlety of a brick to the face. Pretty sure they could feel those gravitational waves in the next system over. Whatever the humans had brought, it certainly wasn't going to be participating in a stealth operation any time soon. Almost immediately, the comm crackled to life, a hail for the newcomer. This is Officer Brighton of the UTNCN1479B. Does anyone copy? Flipping on the screen, I responded. This is Commander James of the RIN Jackrabbit. We copy. Ah, oh, great. Uh, seems like we ended up in the right place. Why do we take a chunk out of the asteroid belt? I twitched in surprise, both at the sudden lack of comms discipline as well as the bizarre request. A quick glance at the sensor readout showed that the human ship itself was equally strange. It resembled a large tube, open on one end with a cluster of engines bolted to the other. Its only armament was a single low-velocity railgun and several point-defense turrets. The entire artifice looked like it was slapped together out of spare parts. More perplexed than ever, I toggled the comms back. This is Commander James, requesting clarification as to your request. Sorry about that, uh, I thought you were in the loop. The boys back in R&D are trying out a new thing that we will use in system resources in an attempt to cut costs. In our case, we're here to weaponize part of the asteroid belt. I wasn't entirely sure how exactly the humans were planning on weaponizing chunks of iron and nickel, but my job description didn't include figuring out the psychology of alien species, and if an experimental human craft wanted to play with rocks, I certainly wasn't going to stop them. I did a quick check to make sure nobody actually owned the rocks in question, and then toggled the comm back on. Go nuts, I said, trying to emulate the casual style of my human counterpart and fervently hoping that I'd use the alien idiom correctly. Much appreciated, Jackrabbit. We'll make sure to stay out of your way. The human spaceship suddenly exploded with movement, as hundreds of small craft bored out of the open end of the tube. The IFF system said that they looked similar to the automated tugboats used in human spaceports, but with slightly large engines and a modified grapple system. Why humans had decided to bring such an inordinate number of empty systems escaped me, but confusion wasn't lessened as the tugs fired off a brief burn and then left them flying ballistic towards the nearby asteroids. Contrary to what certain hollow dramas might tell you, asteroid belts are still astonishingly empty. 
The rocks floating around don't even form an appreciable navigation hazard. But the human tugs were fast enough that they'd all intercept within the next two hours. The nearest was already almost at intercept. I ordered the scopes to track it and watched as it executed a flip and burn and coasted to a neat stop beside its target rock. It extended its grapple arms and encircled the asteroid with some kind of netting. Pittons fired into what I assumed was the asteroid's center of mass, firmly anchoring the tug to the rock. And then it sat there, doing absolutely nothing. Over the course of the next two hours, I watched the same scene play out hundreds of times, and I was still none the wiser as to what their intended purpose was. My idle wondering was interrupted as the scopes pinged and my subordinate spoke up. Sir, FDR projection consistent with known enemy craft detected. They'll be here in uh, four hours. Four hours was almost an unbelievably sloppy. Even the human ship had managed three and they were jumping into a known friendly system. Sure, you had to expend more antimatter the shorter the projection, but they were jumping into an enemy hull system. Fuel efficiency shouldn't be high on the list of priorities. Not that I was complaining, as it made my job a lot easier. I began plotting a course that would take us to the optimal range with their emergence point. Almost as an afterthought, I sent the data over to the humans, Given a look at the vessel, I wouldn't be surprised if the FTL scopes were salvaged from the escape pod or something. The comm crackled to life shortly after. Thanks for the data, Jackrabbit. We'll take it from here. Just sit back and enjoy the fireworks. No need to engage. Well, uh, that was unexpected. But if the humans told me to stay back, I was inclined to listen. Despite the occasional catastrophic failure and my own personal reservations, Human R&D had a pretty impressive track record, and I've never been one to unnecessarily risk the lives of myself and my crew. Plus, the only thing more dangerous than an experimental human weapon was an experimental human weapon pointed at you, and I wanted to stay as far away from whatever they were doing as possible. I acknowledged the request and cancelled the planned burn, then instructed my crew to prepare for a long-range engagement. And then nothing happened. For two and a half hours, there was always a lot of waiting around involved in space combat. The one of the furthest tugs began burning furiously, pushing its chosen rock along with it. It was accelerating rapidly, with a projected path that passed directly through the enemy emergence point. Oh, that's what the humans were doing. Sure enough, the tug stopped burning, detached from its asteroid, and began crawling back to its mothership with one little fuel they'd had remaining. Soon, all the other tugs were emulating the first. As the remaining time to the enemy emergence suddenly decreased, more and more rocks began hurtling through space at impressive speeds, all with the same intercept point. IFF barely had time to register the enemy ship before the first rock hit it. From what I could tell, the damage sustained was relatively minor, leaving a barely visible dent on the outer hull. Then the second rock hit, and the third, and the fourth, and on, and on, and on, until over the course of three minutes there had been nearly a thousand impacts and the enemy craft was reduced to little more than a rapidly expanding cloud of debris. And that was it. Less than three minutes after the battle started, it was over with zero friendly casualties. The enemy hadn't even been able to get off a shot. For the paltry cost of a few tons of real space fuel, the humans had been able to utterly destroy a superior enemy ship. It was a shockingly effective tactic. My stunned reverie was cut short by Brighton's voice came through the comma. Um, right, I guess that's that. Uh, we're going to back up in her home now. Thanks for the assist. I was by no means an expert on the subtleties of human communication, but from what I could tell, he sounded as shocked as I felt. True to the word, the human ship collected all of its drones and quietly slipped into subspace. I retreated to my cabin and began preparing a report to command. It was going to be an interesting one. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. 
I hope that you enjoyed, and if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment, just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one, and until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.